Okay, uh, hi everyone, it's Smithy Q from SmithyQ.com, and we're going to hear a um, look at a video analysis. This is a, a Blitz game that I played uh, just earlier today, and I want to go through my thought process behind it. Not necessarily all the moves and variations, but exactly how I thought to find the moves that I did. Because it's a pretty, uh, it was a nice game, um, was never really in doubt. And often it's how we think that um, is so important in chess. I, Finding the right moves is good, but how do you find those moves? How do you, you do it? So I want to take a look at this game. Um, so I was white. Um, I played my normal scotch, which is great. And then, you know, as always, someone plays a funny move here. Uh, D6, right? I mean, uh, this just gives white a really easy game. And so from here, I'm just able to do all my development. I bring my bishop out. I bring my knight out. I castle. Finish development. So it's right here, um, I don't want to say it's my first think, you know, it's a blitz game. But my first instinct, when I'm looking into this type of position, you know, I, what's my plan, what am I going to do? Because i got a bit more space in the center. Um, he's stuck on the uh, three ranks right back here. Well, I've got four. In fact, I've even got these on the fifth rank. And so I'm going to want to be able, I want to be able to expand. In a perfect world, I want to play f4. Playing f4 immediately... Um, that's going to allow, at the very least, knight g4, or maybe bishop g4. And it just is giving him access to the square. And so, before I do that, I just play h3. Forever stopping anything to do with g4. There's no knight, there's no bishop. Uh, I can go there, I can play f4 in peace. What's he going to do? Is this the most accurate move? Probably not. The computer isn't completely thrilled, but um, it's fine. And then we'll notice my opponent plays almost the exact same thing with h6. But there's actually a huge difference just uh, between these two moves. Again, my move, h3, is preparing the f4 advance. This is exactly what, maybe I can go some g4, g5, and I'm going to expand on the uh, on the king side, the very least in the center. When he plays h6, what's the idea behind h6? h6 is one of those nothing waiting moves where you don't know what else to do, so you just play it. And controlling g5 is often a good idea. But it indirectly, it directly weakens this square, and it indirectly weakens this square. So what, um, for, sorry. Um, in this position, playing g6 is ugly, but it's fine. It's doable. If you play h6, um, and then you play g6, well, all of a sudden, g6, um, well, it's going to hang a pawn, right? And so that means I can plop a piece, say a knight, on that square, and he can never play g6 to kick it out, he would have to exchange with the bishop. And so that's my thought process. He plays h6. This is directly weakening this square, which weakens this square, which means my plan would be to plop up a knight there. So I played bishop takes c6 with the idea that if he takes back with the pawn, um, sooner or later I'm going to uh, throw my knight over there and, again, play f4 and direct myself towards the king side. When he takes back with the bishop, um, he's attacking my pawn twice on e4. So um, playing that f5 doesn't work. So I simply take, and here we go. Uh, he's uh, that. The end result is that he's gotten um, a worse pawn structure, right? He has three pawn islands: groups here, a group here, one group here. I only got two. Things are nice. Um, double pawns are a bit of a weakness. Or, or they can be, um, all my pawns are healthy, things look good. My better bishop, everything is fine. I mean, black is solid, right? But it's fine. And so really the game begins here. What do you do? How do you proceed? And really, it's I, I, <laughs> uh, finished development. Even though we're into the middle game now, I still need to finish development. I need to get my rooks and my queen to the game. And so this is basically my thought. Queen d2, and then there and there. And then why queen d2? I mean, I could move the queen anywhere, right? I can go to d3, I can go to e2, maybe f3. I went to d2 because now there's this battery here, right against that h6 weakness that he uh, created unprovoked. And he always needs to be worried about this sacrifice. Like, right now it's nothing, but maybe in three moves it won't be. Maybe in five, maybe in ten moves. Uh, and it's not easy, um, you know, to, well, to evaluate it. But he has to be careful about it. He plays c5. Okay, I'm going to finish my development. 
He attacks my pawn, which is kind of a weird move, right? He brings his queen instead of his rook. Okay. Push it up. And he plays knight d7. And so then I, there's two thoughts I had immediately. First, he's moving his knight away from the king. So now all of a sudden, bishop takes h6. That sacrifice, it's much more tempting now. There's fewer defenders. His queen's away, his knight's away. Does it work? Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Hard to say, right? This is messy, all right? So we've got, you know, ideas like this and this, but I'm only attacking with two pieces. You know, and he can bring pieces back. At the same time, I mean, uh, computer says white's a pawn up. So it's possible, but it's really messy. I wasn't prepared to go for that. And so really there's this two-step thought process. It's um, does the immediate breakthrough work? Yes or no? I decided I didn't, no, not here. Okay, it turns out it did, <laughs> right? But I decided against that. And so the second step, let's improve my position. What's the other thing? When he moved the knight here, he's no longer controlling the square. So I jumped in. Also notice, this knight, it was attacking e4. Now it's not, right? My only, the only, you know, so I can move the defender. So over the last two moves, we look, you know, from, sorry, we go from here, you know, to, uh, you know, here. Let's go here, here. His knight's getting worse, my knight's getting better. And so it's this thought process, right? Is there a breakthrough, yes or no? So like, can I find a tactic? If yes, do the tactic. If not, improve the position. That's the thought process. He plays bishop to d8, okay, protects the bishop. All right, again, two steps. Does bishop takes h6 work? Ooh, that's really tempting because now it's harder for the queen to get in and my knight is uh, closer to the attack. But I wasn't completely convinced and I thought I had a safe move here in f4. Now he can't bring his knight here, so it looks like the, his knight d7 maneuver was a waste, and I can potentially do f5, f6, or I can play e5, I'm going to crush him, right? Just improving my position. It turns out bishop takes h6 is actually winning here, uh, it's precisely because it's hard for his queen and his other rook to come in for the defense, but that's okay. Again, I haven't really, I haven't worsened my position. He plays knight b6. There, there are no breakthroughs. I can't play bishop takes h6. But he wants to exchange my good knight for his bad, uh, for his less good knight. And not only that, after this exchange, he'll be able to likely bring his bishop to f6, where it's on a great diagonal. So I pull back with knight c3. True, he could play bishop f6 right now. It turns out he does in the game. Uh, first we go a5. I throw an a5. And then he does bishop f6. So then here comes, uh, again, is there a breakthrough? e5 looks so tempting, right? It's hitting that bishop right where it wants to go. And so that's exactly what I played. e5, then after take, knight e4. Uh, really, really common move. e4 isn't just um, trying to take with f takes e4. Uh, no, it's actually clearing the e4 square right here for the knight. And now things are getting scary. Right? I'm threatening to play knight takes f6, just completely ruin his uh, his kingside pawn structure. His pawns are absolutely terrible here on the queen side. I'm going to win something back, so it's not even a pawn sacrifice, right? He comes back. I win the pawn. Then he plays c4. Now we can see what he wants to do. He's hoping for take, take, and then his knight's on a great square. Alternatively, he wants to simply um, exchange here. And now, why is drawing arrows so hard? And now this b3 pawn would be a big weakness. But again, there's that two-step thought process, right? Is there a tactic or is there a breakthrough? And then, if not, how do I improve my position? Well, compared to all the examples before, this looks like the best version of the bishop takes h6 sacrifice. I have a knight that's ready to jump in immediately. I have an open f file and an open d file. Uh, he's got one bishop defending. Everything else is on the queen side. And so bishop takes h6. 
And this is not the hardest um, sacrifice to uh, see in the world because after take take, this is actually uh, an extremely easy um, tack to pull off. There are multiple ways you can uh, win with this. The simplest would be okay. Let's say he brings. Uh, it's not even a really good defensive move. What can he do? Uh, the computer says knight d5 apparently. So just giving up the knight. Um, you can imagine something like rook a6 trying to throw over, but then we're just going to have this knight f6 is going to come in, take, take, and there's no stopping mate here. And then there, there could also be potentially mate like this, or like this, or like that. And we can see the attack is just it's overwhelming. And this is, and again, the reason that this worked so well, oh, the, sorry, um, in the game, he didn't take, he actually played rook to d8. Because again, he could see that the attack was just too strong. I can then move my uh, queen all the way here to f4. Now we got the batter on the f-file. He tries to exchange rooks, but the intermezzo, queen takes f7, and he resigns. Because after, that's just me. And so this game really revolved around this bishop takes h6 sacrifice. And it was possible at multiple different times, right? If we back all the way up. Okay. Here, as soon, um, as, soon as you play, it's possible. No, it doesn't work. It's uh, because he has too many defenders and I'm attacking with just my queen, right? That's it. But then we look here, right? He's moving his pieces away. Does bishop takes h6 work? Peter says it does. It's worth about a pawn. Right, so uh, white would have a one pawn advantage here. Okay, not bad. Uh, here, white would have over a two pawn advantage because again, his pieces are stuck way over here. But I kept improving my position. Right, I could have cashed in, but it's still messy. It's not so clear. Uh, well, actually, I guess if he takes, this is uh, this is also pretty easy. So maybe maybe I, maybe I could have just went in right away. But by continually improving my position. Um, really, that's the classic school of thought, right, Teresh and Steinitz. Uh, you know, you, you improve your position. If you do it enough, you're going to get a breakthrough. And in the end, okay, there's this mini breakthrough here with uh, getting my knight to e4. That was nice. And then it's here when all of a sudden the bishop takes h6 sacrifice is completely winning if he takes. And it, um, right now, even if he doesn't take, it's plus 4, and if he does take, it's plus 10. And so we can see how this continually improving the position allows for the knockout blow to finally come. Um, and that's really how uh, I try to play chess, at least. When I'm at my best, that's how I play. Is, is there a breakthrough? If yes, you do it. If not, we'll keep improving. And then it paid off in the end. So hopefully that's um, that's useful. That can be a guideline, right? Every every move, every position. You know, what is a breakthrough? What could I do potentially? You know, how can I set something up? And or you know, uh, well, do it. And if you can't, well, how can you prepare for something like that? And that's going to lead to um, blows like this. So we found that helpful. I think that that was uh, that was useful. Um, a really short, sweet version of you know how I think, how I approach. Uh, my games, especially when I, easy, relatively easy positions like this, where you know Black didn't really have any counterplay, I was able to do whatever I wanted, and this is an absolutely perfect way of playing. Improve your position, look for lock, look lockouts, look for knockouts. Okay, so that's that. Uh, SpiffyQ, SpiffyQ.com. I'll have a, a text analyst on my blog in a couple days. So you can check that out again, SpiffyQ.com. If I didn't just say that. Otherwise, uh, that's that. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.